one of his attacks literally is the charging of the bull, you know, so that's kind of good. The graphics are pretty good, I would say. Um, if you're used to how the Wii performs graphically, you won't be disappointed by that. I would also say all ten of them have a storyline, and all of them have this really cool, like, moral sort of twist ending, and it really makes it feel like mythology, you know, not necessarily just specifically Roman. They really went for the whole mythology angle. You don't have rounds, you have acts, and when it counts down, you know, when someone, you have to knock out your enemy three times, and the first two times you'll have a countdown from ten to one, and they have to, you know, milk the cow's udder in order to get back up before those 10 seconds have passed, or I guess they'll lose. It never happened to me. And the numbers are literally Roman numerals, you know. It also... just these endings, they're just, they're fantastic. I personally just love the whole, you know, morality tale thing, and if that's at all appealing to you, if mythology is appealing to you and you like arcade fighting games, this is one to get. This is by far the best mythology related game I've tried. As long as you accept that it is basically, at the core, a fighting game, an arcade fighting game, you should enjoy it. It does have some extra aspects. You know, some of the special attacks are really unfair. You have to be somewhat aggressive and make sure your enemy doesn't use really annoying attacks on you in order to, you know, win. Because, for example, the gladiator can throw a piece of meat at you and it'll be followed by an angry lion who mauls you. There are various others. Thanatos has God Mode, meaning he regenerates, as one of his special attacks, and his basic enchantment is Onslaught, which makes all of his basic attacks unblockable. Although apparently you can block it if you time it just right, I discovered. All in all, it's not going to compete with the big masters on the market, but it's not really trying to. It's just, it's fun, small, and it, you know, it delivers. When you first start it up, it looks like there's really only two modes of play. There's a practice mode, but that just, that shows you videos of how you play the game, what you can do, and how to do it, and then you get to play for as long as you want against an AI-controlled enemy and in these you regenerate, so you can just try out all the stuff. And you can choose whomever you want in the practice mode. The story mode is just the story mode, you know, you fight pretty much everyone. I think one or two times I didn't have to fight everyone. And, you know, finally reach Thanatos, if you beat him, you win, and it saves the enchantments and weapons that you unlocked. It says it doesn't save your progress. I think what this essentially means is that if you don't win, or if you stop before you've beaten Thanatos, you know, you can't just continue from there. You have, you'll have to start over. And only by beating Thanatos will you get the onslaught for that character, I think. Anyway, there's also the versus mode, and at first glance, you might think, oh, so I can't actually play against AI. Obviously, it's also for playing against, you know, a friend of yours, but you can, if no second player joins, it will just go to AI. The unfortunate thing is you can't set a level for this AI. It's not... There aren't difficulty levels for it, so it'll be as frankly, easy as it is in story mode. I'm not that good at fighting games, but I completed this with ease, more or less. I mean, for some of them it was kind of difficult, but on the whole, I didn't really have trouble, so 
if you're looking for a challenge in a fighting game, this probably isn't it. In versus mode, you can of course also set the rules. Every single stage, all of the arenas are you know famous areas. There's Atlantis, for example, and each of them has a guardian, and Atlantis has Poseidon, who will attack you with this massive trident that you have to fend off, and he'll switch back and forth between the two players and eventually attack one of them if they don't fend it off fast enough. And some of these choices are a little odd. For example, the Colosseum Ruins, for some reason, has the Kraken, which basically means that there's water around the middle of the Colosseum. I don't know why. It That seems a little weird, but whatever. All of the Guardians and all of the Arenas are famous and from mythology, so that's really cool. There's also the Belly of the Leviathan, where you fight on board this sunken ship that the Leviathan has swallowed whole, you know. Basically, I think I've already said the basically part, so anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of Tournament of Legends. Hey, I didn't give away any of the endings to the stories, they are really awesome, though. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.